Monsters is a show about the worst human beings on the planet. Viewer discretion is advised. If you'd like to support the show, the easiest way is to donate a few bucks at buymeacoffee.com forward slash monsters. There's more information about supporting us in the video's info or at our website, thisismonsters.com forward slash support. Dorothea Puente ran a boarding house in Sacramento, California, where she preyed on the elderly and disabled. She would offer rooms to vulnerable people and then sign their social security checks over to herself. After being caught with that scam, she came up with a new plan to steal people's money. This is Monsters. Dorothea Puente had a troubling past. Her parents were both alcoholics who spent all of their money on booze. They were both dead by the time she was nine years old, and she was placed into an orphanage where she was sexually abused. Eventually, relatives from Fresno, California, took her in. In 1945, at 16 years old, Puente married her first husband, Fred McFowell. The couple had two daughters, one who was sent to live with family in Sacramento, and the other who was put up for adoption. McFowell left her in 1948, and she was embarrassed about being rejected, so she would lie and say that her husband died of a heart attack. Once on her own, she started forging checks to get by, but was caught in the early 50s and sentenced to one year in prison. She was released after six months, and soon after married a man named Axel Johansson. She stayed married to Johansson for 14 years, and the relationship was known to be violent. Court records show that Johansson had his wife committed to a mental hospital in 1961, where she was prescribed antipsychotic medication. In 1960, Puente operated a brothel, for which she was arrested and sentenced to 90 days in jail. After her release, she was arrested again for vagrancy and sentenced to another 90 days. Her criminal activities slowed down as she found work as a nurse's aide, caring for disabled and elderly people in their homes. In 1966, at 37 years old, she divorced Johansson and married 18-year-old Roberto Puente. The young man wasn't able to stay faithful, and the marriage only lasted two years. It's said that his main interest in marrying Dorothea was to gain U.S. citizenship. About the same time she got divorced, Puente took over control of a large 16-bedroom care home at 2100 F Street in Sacramento. Over the next 10 years, Puente's boarding house did well, and it's attributed to her making donations to political campaigns and charitable causes. Because of this, she had access to elite circles and is known to have spent time with California Governors Pat Brown, Jerry Brown, and Ronald Reagan. She also developed strong relationships with local social workers. They were happy to use her services since she was willing to board alcoholics and drug addicts. She married for the fourth and final time in 1976 to a man named Pedro Montalvo. Montalvo was a violent alcoholic and the relationship only lasted a few months. Once her final husband was out of the picture, Puente started hanging out at local bars, meeting older men who received benefits, then forging their signatures and stealing their money. She was caught in the act but only received five years of probation. This sentence also barred her from operating the boarding house, so she started working as an in-home caregiver. While doing this, she would drug her patients and steal their valuables. At this time, she also started renting out an apartment on the second floor of her home, which was located just down the street from the boarding house. It wasn't until she started renting out this apartment that things started getting deadly. Her first tenant, Ruth Monroe, died of an overdose of painkillers. Puente convinced the police that she had been depressed, so they ruled it a suicide. Shortly after that, Puente was arrested for her scam of drugging patients and stealing from them. She was sentenced to five years in prison. She would be released after three years, but while inside she had met a man named Everson Gilmuth. Gilmuth was a retiree who would write letters to women in prison. She developed a relationship with the man because she wanted someone she could scam as soon as she got out of prison. She got her wish when she was released from prison, and Gilmuth was waiting to pick her up in his red Ford pickup. Puente was evaluated by psychologists before being released from prison in 1985 and was diagnosed as schizophrenic. The psychologist wrote, quote, This woman is a disturbed woman who does not appear to have remorse or regret for what she does. 
she is to be considered dangerous and her living environment and or employment should be closely monitored, end quote. After her release, Puente hired a local handyman, Ismael Flores, to do some work around her house. She had him install some wood paneling at her house, and she was also able to sell him a red Ford pickup that she had recently acquired. After that, she asked Flores to build her a wooden chest to use for storage. She wanted it to be six feet long, three feet wide, and two feet deep. Flores agreed and had it finished by the next day. Puente used the box to dispose of Gilmuth's body, though she continued to collect his pension. On January 1, 1986, a fisherman spotted the box partially submerged in the water and notified the police. When they opened the box, they found the decaying remains of an elderly man in nothing but underwear. It would be three years before they identified the remains as those of Everson Gilmuth. A social worker eventually reported one of her case subjects missing to the police. The disabled man, named Alberto Montoya, was referred to Puente to board at her house. The police, led by homicide detective John Cabrera, searched her house but didn't find anything incriminating. The grandmotherly woman maintained that her tenant had taken a trip to Utah, and when the investigator asked if they could dig up some freshly disturbed soil in her yard, she even let them borrow a shovel. While the police were digging, they uncovered remains buried on the property. When they showed Puente what they found, she seemed genuinely surprised, which investigators now know is due to her lifetime of being a con artist. Since the remains looked to have been there much longer than Montoya had been missing, they were skeptical that this white-haired little lady could be a murderer. They took her to the police station for questioning, but she remained calm and unflinching. The investigators sent her home for the evening. The next morning, more authorities arrived to continue searching her property. Before they started, Puente asked Detective Cabrera if she was under arrest. When they said no, she asked if she could go down the street for some coffee. Authorities agreed, and she left the property. What they didn't know at the time was that she had about $2,500 stuffed into her oversized purse. It was only 21 minutes later that they uncovered a second set of remains. Police officers raced down the street to arrest Puente, but she was gone. Cabrera was the victim of her most recent con. Puente fled to Los Angeles, where she kept a low profile at a downtown hotel that she checked into under the name Dorothea Johansson. Falling back onto her old tricks, she headed to a bar and befriended an elderly pensioner. Unfortunately for her, the man recognized her from a television report and he notified the police. She was quickly arrested. The elderly woman sat in jail while police worked to identify the bodies that had been buried on her property. They uncovered seven bodies, four women and three men. In 1992, Dorothea Puente was charged with nine murders. She was charged with the murder for the seven people found buried on her property, for the murder of Everson Gilmuth, and for the murder of Alvaro Gonzalez. The jury found her guilty of three, but couldn't come to a decision on the other six. On December 11, 1993, Dorothea Puente was given two life sentences without the possibility of parole. Once the verdict was read, Puente turned to her lawyer and said, quote, I didn't kill anyone, end quote. She spent the rest of her life insisting that all of the tenants found on her property had died of natural causes. She died of natural causes in prison in 2011. She was 82 years old. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up, leave us a comment, and make sure to hit the subscribe button to ensure you don't miss a video. Also, remember that if you'd like to support the show, you can find information on how to do that in the video's info or at thisismonsters.com forward slash support. Thanks again.